poster. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome everyone to the March 26th meeting of the Litchfield Board of Selectmen. It is 6 o'clock. The board is coming out of a paperwork review process, and I would like to call the meeting to order and start with a Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, since this is the first uh, meeting since uh, town meeting, or town voting, we have a new selectman. I'd like to welcome uh, Mr. Stephen Weber to the board. And at this point, I'd ask our esteemed town clerk to um, swear Mr. Weber in as, so that he could officially conduct his duties. Thank you. So why don't you go ahead out in front and... and covenant on you as selectmen to the best of your abilities agreeable to the rules and regulations of the Constitution and the laws of the state of New Hampshire. So I hope you buy. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, any signatures needed? Nope. Okay. Well, I think you don't need a signature. Okay. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. And I assume that all of your fans, or a lot of them, are here. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah. That's not going to be a lot of public opinion. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all be scattering very shortly. Oh. <laughs> there goes your wife. Go on. <laughs> yeah, she's the first wow. one. Oh, all right. <laughs> that was very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the next order of business is uh, Board of Selectmen appointments. And... Um, we will have an election for chairman, uh, vice chair, and we will talk about the committee assignments tonight, okay? Uh, so, hey, might as well go for it and uh, I'll entertain a motion for someone to, for the position of chairman. I'll make a motion for, uh, for Mr. Mayor to be chairman. Second. Motion made and seconded for the incumbent to serve as chair again for another year. Are there any other nominations? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Thank you very much for your support, gentlemen, and your confidence. And I hope I can fulfill that uh, over the next 52 weeks. Okay, for vice chair, I'll entertain a motion for vice chair. I'll make a motion for uh, Mr. Brunel for vice chair. Motion made for Mr. John Brunel to serve as vice chair. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? Any other nominations? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Motion carries uh, four, zero, one. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I should have abstained too. Then. Ah, too late. Okay. <laughs> it, was a second, it, was, it was a last minute decision. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, committee assignments. Um, we basically have we have budget committee, uh, conservation, and recreation, and planning. Um, budget committee. John, you, you're. Um, I'd like to stay on. Yeah. You would like to continue to serve. Yep. Okay. Um, any issues with that, gentlemen? Guess not. So what I would ask, though, is there's, there's one or two weeks where I can't make it. So I'm going to be traveling in December. So I know you in the past you have expressed in, you you were my backup. Mm -hmm. um, I know Kurt's expressed interest in the committee. So if he wants to be my backup, would you like to serve backup, as a backup alternate to uh, budget committee? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, um, planning board. Um, Mr. Weber, would you like to? I will take planning board. Okay. Any 
Issues for that, Jim? Nope. Okay. Would you continue conservation? That's fine. Huh? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Is that a commentary you want to share? <clears throat> huh? No, just no. I hate Facebook. Yeah. Would you mind continuing with recreation? Yeah, no, that's fine. Because of your experience in it? Okay. Unless you want conservation. No, no, no. Recreation's exciting. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, um, I think we've got all of them. Mr. Brown, are we, are we all set with it? Okay. Yeah, we have the um, Historic District Commission, which I, which I haven't really, <clears throat> I gotta take a look at that again and see if there's you know, a requirement to have a selectman's representative or not. But okay. We'll address that uh, later. All right. Okay, on to um, items of consent. Review and approval of the consent items. We have nine items which include the March 12th, 2018 meeting minutes, um, the March 20th, 18 uh, accounts payable manifest for 60,255.92, and March 27th manifest at we have payroll manifests uh, March 17th of 57963.83 and March 29th of $51,034.51. We have an elderly, a denial of an elderly exemption. We have three veterans tax credits. We have a land use change tax of 12,500. We have a gravel tax levy of $2,286.36. We have a notice of intent to excavate uh, we have the report of appropriations, which is the MS-232, which I believe is the form we have to file with the DRA after town meeting is approved. Um, we have to file that to tell them what was approved at, at voting, right? Yep. Okay. Um, public input, we usually um, say that it'll occur no later than 6.30, but I believe we have a gentleman here that is, I think you're the only one for public input, or are you gentlemen here for public input? No? Sir, are you? So I, what I'll say, rather than make you wait, why don't we entertain you coming up for? We need to make a motion for Oh, I'm sorry. We have to vote on the consent issue. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> My apologies. I'll make a motion. We approve the consent as read and read. Moved by Mr. Burnell to approve the items of consent. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0-0. My God, I'm losing it. I can't. Uh, I, I want to move next to the kick in the table. You you want want to vote. <laughs> My apologies, sir. Now you can come. Motion carries. So, items of consent are approved. Sir, would you um, have a seat? Introduce yourself. Yes. Tell us where you live. And okay, uh, I'm Bill Fisk. I live 14 Laurel Street. Okay. I've been there since '93, and I intend to die in that house. Hopefully, quite some You're time. You're not in from a rush, now. are you? Hopefully, so, quite some time from now. Okay, that's good. But I bought the house specifically to grow old in. Okay. And now that I'm retired, I'm trying to live in a livable community, and I figure rather than move, I should be working to make Litchfield one. And one of the things that we need are safe roads that accommodate all users. And 3A is being repaved, and I've been working with the DOT. Not that they really like to hear from me, but they <coughs> told me that if I can get the town to request it, we can get the 11-foot lanes changed to speed commensurate 10-foot lanes, which will lower the operating speed to what's posted instead of the 48 miles an hour that's there now. And this will increase safety by 30%, double the road life, and uh, eliminate the need for our police to play safety patrol on poorly designed roads. You know, let them pr protect crime instead of safety patrol issues. And because I happen to ride a bicycle everywhere, somehow or other, when I requested to the town manager, he took my request for 10-foot lanes on the road and changed it into a request for a separate bike path along 3A. 
This is something that we do not need. I'm strongly opposed to it. And to have my name tied to it as a thing kind of got me upset. So I really want to go on record that I do not want a separate bike lane on 3A. I, what I want is roads that safely accommodate all users. And 10-foot travel lanes will do that. If you want proof of that, go to the town of Bedford. They have a town-wide protocol for 10-foot lanes. And as a result of that, they have, like I say, 30% reduction in crashes, double the road life, and the cops can do something other than pick off people for going the speed they think is right. And I'd kind of like to see us adopt the same protocol that Bedford did of having 10-foot lanes. It will make our town a better place to live for everybody and actually save us some money. And as a taxpayer, that's more important to me than the biking because 25 years of riding my bike in this town, I'm still here. I don't think it's that dangerous. But if you count how many people join me, mm. I don't count too many. So apparently most people think our roads are unsafe to ride a bike on. And maybe if we get the posted speed to match the operating speed, things will change. But the biggest thing I have to do is point out that our Albuquerque that everybody says you should ride your bike on instead of 3A is <clears throat> dangerous because it is improperly striped. The travel lane width on 3A is 11 foot, 48 miles an hour. It's no secret that uh, the 12 foot lanes on Albuquerque produce a higher speed and National Regional Planning's traffic count said it was 56 miles an hour. I saw a 35 mile an hour speed zone and a 56 mile an hour operating speed. I think that failure to remediate a known hazard makes the town liable for willful negligence and I really don't want to be sued by the poor guy that gets hit by somebody going the design speed of the road. So, and I'm not going to tell our cops to go out there and pick off 85% of the people on the road. It's not going to work. And all we're going to do is have an accident. Put the 10-foot lanes on Albuquerque. We'll have a great big wide shoulder for the bikes to ride on instead of playing tag with the people on the uh, walking path. And I don't know how many people have been on that path, but I'll bet you wouldn't be too happy if I went by you at 18 miles an hour on my bike. And that's the speed I ride it. So I belong in the road. And anybody else that knows how to ride a bike belongs in the road. I, at, when I first started riding on that, when they first opened it up here, I had several incidents and some poor guy in a propane truck had to get a new job because he ran me off the road and that's just too bad. <laughs> and I think that's something we should address properly by saying, let's go with properly designed roads and the default speed should be what's posted. And anybody with a smartphone, speed gun app, you know, you go out and you go stand on Albuquerque and see what you think the speed is. <laughs> I, I know it's not 35. And people say, you're brave to be riding your bike on the road. Well, you saw my high-vis jacket, and everybody's seen me in there. Anybody that hits me, it's not an accident, so I'm not really too worried. But we shouldn't have to go out and worry about that. I want it so anybody in this town feels safe walking in front of their house or riding their bike and can send their kids out without armed guards and say, you'll come back safe. And all we need is, is to follow the example of Bedford. And that's Sir, all I want to say. I'll talk forever and I won't get anything more accomplished. No, thank but. you, uh, and I think you make a valid point, but um, you know, just know that we're not traffic engineers and we're unaware of that that's why I'm here. you can be sure that um we will bring it to the road agent and the police chief and um get some dot information on that and also i must apologize for any um uh, misunderstanding you may have had with the bike lane um I'll, it we'll, happens we'll take responsibility for that now so, um, what people in your position need to know is only one thing don't need to know how to design the road anymore. You need to know how to take the appendix out of somebody. What you need is you go up to the guy designing the road and say, there's the road, there's the posted speed. I'm checking the speed before you start working and see what it is. And when you're done working, it better match the posted speed or you're not done working. Well, that, and that's what we have to find out. That's what I want is Thank people you. in your position to write up the contract that says the operating speed will be. And... 
Well, tell we, the guy we, how to do it. Sure. Do Sir, it. We will consult with people I know that would know a lot more than I on that. And, and uh, certainly I have no problem asking them for their expertise. And we will... Um, we will certainly take your comments and anybody with a speed gun can go out there and they don't make, they don't know why it's wrong but they can obviously say i see a 35 mile an hour speed zone a 56 mile an hour speeding so, car what are we going to do about it what and i'm sure dot has people that can well they came down here and they they i talked to them and they came down here without me and they weren't real happy with the discussions that went on <laughs> Well, thank you very much for coming in, sir. Thank I appreciate you. that. Thank you. I don't want to take up all the time, everybody, but I did think that I should at least clarify that I am in no way asking for special treatment for less than 1% of our population. Sure. I just want to have safe roads for everybody at the lowest cost. Thank you. And again, I apologize for a any you know, misconception that you, know, you have. You're not a bicycle rider. You're not a road engineer. Why should you know anything about it? All you need to know is someone like me came and bought yes, it. Sir. Thank you very much for coming in. Okay, next order of business. Um, number one, Mr. Jason Brennan, welcome. And you'd like to um, educate us on the yep. beautification expendable trust fund. Exactly. Thank you, sir. So thank you very much, and I just wanted to give a brief, okay. Just uh, please tell everybody who you are, for those that may not, in the unlikely event that people don't know who you are and where you point, live. For the record, Jason Brennan, 23 Aldrich Street. Thank you. Litchfield, New Hampshire, 03052. Well, okay. okay. Thank you, Jason. So I wanted to give the board a little bit of information regarding the intention of the beautification fund. And as you know, the beautification fund passed at town meeting and $2,500, a whopping $2,500, I may add, went into account to support beautification projects. And as the <coughs> author, I wanted to give the board a little bit of understanding of what the intention of the fund was. Um, the board, as you know, is actually the executor of the fund and really can, I assume, can just make any decision that you want. But I just wanted to go briefly through what the thinking was when we put this together. So I put together two sheets of paper. Uh, number one kind of gives what the, uh, what the fund was envisioned to be used for, and the second page is actually kind of like a little mini application. So. In regards to what the fund was intended to be used for, it's basically for, the intended use is basically for semi-permanent or permanent beautification fixtures. That would happen, that would occur along main roads like Albuquerque or 3A. So those are really the locations of the intention. Um, what was semi-permanent or permanent, uh, permanent beautification items like trees or benches or things like that? Um, projects could be of any size, but it was kind of envisioned that for the 2,500 bucks, maybe three to five projects would be completed. Um, the citizens, anybody in town who wanted to use the funds could do so, and they would petition the Board of Selectmen. And that's what I put together on page two, a little mini request form that kind of asked the questions that I would have probably asked as, if, as being the person that, that wrote this. And um, I guess what it was not really intended to be used for was temporary items like flowers and things like that, or for rental equipment, or for hiring somebody to do something. It was more for the, the funds to be used for purchasing the materials, and the people that petitioned to use those funds would be responsible for installing the items. So give you a couple examples. Street trees are good. Benches are good, little signs, something like that, posts, things like that would be um, good use of the funds. But what the intention wasn't, you know, the intention was not to be hay bales and pumpkins and those type of things, more permanent fixtures. That's it. Questions for Mr. Brennan, comments? You know, it's my understanding that this is a one-time deal, right? I mean, we're not recharging this every year. Um, this is once the we can't 
take donations into this fund either, can we? Right. No, but we could appropriate money into the fund. I thought right. we could. Can we do that? I thought we told, we're told we couldn't. Yeah, we could do it each year at town meeting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, town meeting, yeah. yes. Right. You can go to the voters and ask for more money. Right. Because it, it's an expendable trust fund that has been established now, and in order to terminate it, you have to have a vote at town meeting to terminate it. So it'll be continuing, um, and the board would have to request funds. What we could do is take money from grantors, put it in the general fund, and then tell the people at town meeting, well, we'd like to appropriate this amount because we did sure. take it in as a revenue. Makes sense. So we, we can zero this out, and then and next year we can and ask the voters correct. to refill can, it. Right. Okay. And, and especially if we get donations, we can appropriate and tell the people that we received mm -hmm. this amount of money during the year as a donation. So it's in the general fund. So we would just like to, to appropriate the, the money. That was the in, the intention. The intention wasn't to go back to the voters next year for another twenty five hundred dollars. The intention for this was to kind of hopefully kickstart something, maybe generate some donations, figure out a way to get those donations into the fund. Troy took a look at that initially, and it wasn't super easy because they had to be earmarked towards specific things. Yeah. Right. But and there might be a way around that. There might be a way around that by collecting donations, uh, giving them to the town and put some blanket statement on them to be used, you know, at the Board of Selectmen's discretion. It still discretion. requires a vote of the voters to approve it. Right. I think, I think you, you raise a good point that if the funds are <clears throat> donated to the town with no strings attached other than maybe to be specifically for a beautification, then we could have a warrant article where we could appropriate those funds to the fund. Correct, because gotcha. they do exist in the general fund. And, that and we can to explain it. to the people at deliberative and at town meeting that we have received so much money in donations during the year. We would like to, what we're just doing is taking that money, appropriating it, because we did get it in. Understood. And, um, that, uh, that's the only way you can do an expendable trust uh, legally, you know, because it has to be appropriated into the fund. Gotcha. So, okay. um, I think that's it. We've got a, a couple of ideas for use of some of these funds, but we're hoping that some other folks will come forward and with some ideas as well. Thank you. So Jeff. more to come soon. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Any, question, any other questions? Or anything? All right. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Um, Fire station update. Do you have anybody coming in, Troy, or just, are you going to? No, I was just going to give. Um, okay. <clears throat> okay. So I want to let the board know that last Thursday, the fire chief, myself, deputy chief, um, our design team, the architects, Ekman Construction, uh, we all met over at Ekman Construction in Bedford to discuss. Um, how we start to proceed forward with the construction of the fire station project. And a couple of things that came out of that meeting was, um, one, you know, Ekman has a lot of experience in um, doing municipal and school projects. Uh, they made it very clear that the town needs to be careful. We don't want to be committing to any contracts um, until we have our bonding commitment letter in place. So that was the takeaway yeah, well, that was makes sense. number one priority. <laughs> you, need, you need to focus on getting your money secured, and then we can, um, you know, start looking at securing contracts. Right. Uh, but with that being said, obviously there's, there's work that needs to be done between now and hopefully uh, securing our bond funding. Uh, one of the other issues that came up was that during um, the process of reducing the proposed project from five and a half million dollars down to the 3.7 we worked with the architect and the construction manager in identifying areas that could be reduced those reductions were just based on um, you know certain um, cost um, scales that they use uh, but now with some of the changes that we had were uh, to the site plan uh, which was something that's going to be needing a, uh, a permit from the state of New Hampshire if we disturb two acres or more of, of the site, which is called um, 
alteration of terrain permit. So it's very common. Anything that disturbs two acres or more needs to go through the state permitting process. So we had some discussion about whether or not where we eliminated the back doors to the station, um, plans for all that infrastructure that would support um, the fire station and phase two um, of uh, if the police station one day were, were added to the building. Whether it made sense or not to scale back the project so that we didn't um, exceed the two acres and eliminating that state permitting process. However, there's some discussion about sometimes it makes sense to get that permit in place. <laughs> so, um, sorry. Check in on your flight. <laughs> no, our former selectman is. <laughs> um, so we're we're going to be also meeting with a um, a local um, site contractor to actually um, get some feedback on how uh, they believe we should proceed with the site work, and that that's going to happen this week. Okay. Um, Another big item here, which uh, is I want the board to be aware of. So if we make some changes to the structural, um, structural changes to the building, that's the elimination of that fifth bay area. Um, we changed some of the, um, the, the way that the front walls were gonna be constructed. So there was th these were precast concrete structures that were gonna be put in place. They've been changed to two by six construction. So uh, we cut back a lot on um, electrical, HVAC, all those types of things. The architect, the civil engineers, um, all the folks that are involved in putting these plans together. Um, right now, the architect's telling me it may cost an additional $65,000 to revise all of these plans so that we have a set, you know, we have documents that can now be bid on. Everyone, we didn't really like that number. So we all decided uh, let's focus on getting our uh, bonding in place and let's have a meeting as quickly as possible with the site um, company that could you know, possibly do this work for us and see how they would recommend that we approach this project. That will, the outcome of that will probably dictate on what we can and cannot do um, moving forward. What I didn't realize was how quickly um, the bond application process is coming. In order to make um, the July uh, sale, our bond application needs to be submitted to the New Hampshire Municipal Bond Bank by April the 13th, and all the legal information um, submitted to our bond council uh, April the 16th. So uh, apparently there's a lot of projects that were approved uh, in the state this year and there's also um, some fear of some interest rate um, hikes right. sometime after to July. Be four of them this year. So the bond banks trying to um, knowing that they have a lot of projects and they know that there's this uh, potential of a rate increase trying to expedite the schedule move everything ahead uh, in anticipation of the July bond sale so if everything goes well um, we would have our funding in hand June 13th. And Do you foresee any issue about that? I don't. I mean, we have a big, big application from uh, Bond Council and from the Municipal Bond Bank. So, we'll, you know, I, but I don't believe we should have any problems. We'll, you know, who knows? I've okay. I've never um, gone through the bonding process before, so I just you always hear how difficult it is. Everything's got to be squeaky clean. Um, if can there's any our, issues, they can our attorneys give us a hand on that. Well, we have bond council. Oh, this right. board selected right. Right. prior we have a bond to um, right. prior to the election. So okay, so I'm working with them. Great. Um, so I think that's that's where we're where we're at right now with this project. Um, just wanted the board to understand what's what's going to be going on in the next uh, couple months. Excellent. And you know, I get concerned. A lot of people think that we're going to be move, moving dirt in May. Um, I don't think that fits the schedule. I mean, I think we're going to be doing a lot of administrative work and, um, you know, for the month of April and May, possibly June. Great. Any questions for Troy on that? 
I'll just plan to make sure I keep this as an agenda item. Yeah. Um, so that we could, you know, we're always talking about it and uh, everyone knows what's going on. Okay. Okay. Impact phase encumbrance. That's right. All right. So currently, right now, um, Karen took a look at the uh, fire department impact fees. <coughs> we have about thirty thousand four hundred dollars, um, give or take, because you know some of these funds have matured. You got to return them, or we got interest that needs to be posted. So she recommended that um, going forward uh, at this meeting, if we could uh, ask the board to encumber thirty thousand of those funds. Primarily, the first thing that we're looking to do is we had an agreement with Ekman Construction that if the bond passed, that we would um, compensate them $3,000 for all the, the pre-vote work that they did. If the bond failed, we weren't obligated to pay, pay them. Wow. Um, so I do have that invoice right now that's, um, that they've sent. And as you see in my notes, we also have an agreement that um, all the pre bond or pre-construction work that they'll be doing from this point forward um, that they would have a fee of seven thousand dollars <throat> um, also have um, some miscell miscellaneous fees with legal counsel so I was at this point I was thinking if the board could encumber thirty thousand um, dollars I wouldn't expend any of those funds um, without coming to the board and having a vote but at least would encumber the funds that would be our budget. Uh, first expenditure and the recommended motion would be to pay Ekman Construction the $3,000. Gentlemen, questions? And if not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll, I'll move to encumber $30,000 from the fire impact fee account to cover ongoing pre-construction, pre-bond, and other related fees and costs related to the construction of the approved fire station building. And further, to authorize the town administrator to pay this from said fees, 3000 to... Ekman Construction for pre-bond approval services. Motion by Mr. Brunel. Is there a second? Can you just make that a little bigger next time? Yeah, I <laughs> second. increase the funds. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion? Questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Aye. Motion carries 401. One abstention. Okay. Go to. Purchase order approvals, Mr. Brown. Special exception? Or the sole source type deal? Okay, so we'll do, um, we'll do the plow truck purchase and uh, plow equipment. And then also uh, the next item will be the paving contract. So I have to admit, um, you know, Jack came in and talked to me the day after the uh, election results and discussed how are we going to proceed forward with the purchase of the plow truck. Uh, that was his greatest concern uh, because as we have learned from other towns, the, this takes time. You need to place your order. You, the truck is actually supplied by one vendor. Once the truck arrives, you need to get uh, the truck then to a, a, a vendor that puts the plow equipment on. And if you do everything, um, as quickly as possible, you know, you have a good chance of getting your plow truck um, already uh, in operating condition sometime in October, maybe if you're lucky, September. There are towns that um, weren't able to move as quickly, we heard last year, and they never uh, were able to get the plow equipment on their trucks and those trucks set in the garage. Well, brand new trucks, but set in the garage um, all this, this winter. So, um, I want to thank the town of Bedford's public works engineer uh, for uh, helping me out and understanding the whole process. Um, as we were talking about the PFOA meeting, somehow uh, I had a conversation with him and um, it was very helpful. So in our own purchasing policy, something that we recently discovered is that we've always, and I've always um, been under the understanding that if we have a state bid price, uh, then we don't have to go through a competitive process which is, um, that is the way the policy is written. However, it still requires a purchase over $12,000, still requires the Board of Selectmen to approve uh, the right. purchase order. Right. 
We just don't have to go to bid for it. We because, just don't have to go to bid right. for it. It's an exception. That's a permitted exception, but the board still approves the purchase order. So I've not, I've not actually brought anything to this board before, when we've had state bid pricing. So, um, yeah. although we don't purchase much, right, <laughs> over twelve thousand dollars. So if the first item now is a plow truck, truck that we have a state bid, bid price. Um, this is eighty-two thousand two hundred eighteen dollars. Um, it's just a cabin chassis. There's no dump body. It's basically the, the cabin chassis and it's state bid price. Gentlemen, questions about the plow truck itself, the chassis. If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make it. Uh, I'll make a motion that in accordance with section six of the purchasing policy, I move to authorize the town administrator to approve a purchase order in the amount of $82,218 for the purchase of a Freightline 108 SD plow truck per state contract 800212. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Bork. Discussion? Question? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 500. Okay, so the next step is the plow equipment, <clears throat> which is a plow, it's a wing, it's all the hydraulic equipment, it's all the lights, everything, um, and it includes a, a sander, a salt sander. In this case, we have not gone out to a competitive bidding process because uh, we're really very concerned about the time constraints. Uh, there's really only two vendors in the state that we would use. One is um, HP Fairfield, which is in um, Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, there was another company up there, um, Sleepers, which recently was purchased and they no longer uh, supplying um, commercial <coughs> power equipment at this time. We have uh, Donovan equipment in Londonderry and we have a very good relationship with them. They're actually listed on our purchasing policy as um, an exempt vendor, but only for service and parts <coughs> and equipment. Um, we like, we'd like to ask the board to consider uh, allowing us to sole source this equipment. We've gone to them, uh, got what we believe is a very solid price uh, at $72,620. And they have um, committed to making sure that this equipment will be ordered and will be installed on our on our truck uh, before the winter plow season starts. Questions, so, gentlemen. So you we approved a cabin chassis purchase. Now we're going to Donovan, and we're going to have them put a plow and a sander on. Where's the dump body? And the dump body also. So they put oh, the, the dump body. Will right. be Donovan, Donovan puts the dump. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's all included. I mean, like, <clears throat> interesting. I mean, it's the truck itself is all, you know, the plow equipment is almost the same as the purchase in the truck. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Any other questions, gentlemen? I'll entertain a motion. Gentlemen? I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'll make a motion in accordance with section 9 and section 10 of the purchasing policy. I move, the author I move to authorize the town administrator to approve the purchase order in the amount of $72,620 for the installation and purchase of plow equipment for the new plow truck. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries five zero zero. Okay. DES Water Quality Monitoring Assistance Program, Mr. Brown. Okay. Um, if we want, we'll do the paving because it's in line with the whole oh, I'm sorry. policy. I'm sorry. I didn't see item B. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, so a couple things. <clears throat> in the past, the town has used um, engineering services to design the scope of work, 
bid specifications, a very formal bid packet for paving, uh, doing road improvements. Now, in my opinion, this is definitely uh, necessary work when we're doing reconstruction of drainage um, structures and swales um, and other, you know, actual construction. The projects that we're doing this year are uh, simple, straightforward. Just we're going to be grinding the, the existing pavement, mixing it in with a sub base, fine grading, doing compaction, and then paving. So same exact project we did um, last year, um, most of the roads. The, so we have spent anywhere from eight to $10,000 every year for these engineering services. Um, and then we find that um, either no one bids on the projects except for continental paving, or if we do have a bidder, continental paving is always the lowest bidder. Knowing that we committed to doing the DPW MRI study um, and we're using, we're tapping into the engine, you know, the consulting services line. Um, I asked Jack if he would go to Continental Paving and see what they could do to go out, visit the roads that we're proposing to do, and come up with um, their, uh, you know, best cost estimate. And what they've done is they've come back. The pricing was so good based on our estimates last fall that we're actually going to be able to pick up one extra uh, street project. They're holding their 2017 pricing uh, to the price that they were awarded the contract last year for. The only item that would be moving is the cost of liquid asphalt. And that's pretty standard because that number changes every day. It's hard to get any contractor to lock in that price. So we'd like to ask the board uh, <coughs> that in this case, and the purchasing policy is very clear that if we bid this type of a service or um, equipment, whatever, out within the last 12 months, that we can actually use um, that bid. And again, uh, timing of this is critical. Um, if we were to go out to a public bidding process, you may not get the bid specs out there. By the time we award them, you could be out in, the, in June, and then you find yourself putting asphalt down sometime late September, October. Right. Northwood learned that the hard way. It's, <coughs> it's especially with the economy this the year. The vendor offered the year the same price, and one of them yeah. wanted to go out to bid, and they ended up spending $155,000 more on the same project and not getting it done until the beginning of December. Hmm. So... I, I couldn't agree with you more. Questions, gentlemen? Comments? I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. In accordance with uh, section <coughs> six of the purchase <coughs> policy, I move to author authorize the town administrator to approve the contract with Continental Paving, in court, and purchase order not to exceed 426000 for the 200, uh, 2018 road improvement projects, said funds to come from Highway Block Grant, 201,000, Warren Article 7 of 200,000, road, road improvements of 25,000. Motion by Mr. Bork. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Brunel. Discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Now we go to DES. Oh, water quality, okay. So as you know, I've been attending uh, this uh, regional stormwater uh, meetings over at the National Regional Planning Commission. And um, they, you know, they've pretty much on a monthly basis starting to interact with a lot of the folks I had was um, Barbara McMillan from New Hampshire DES reached out to me uh, via email last week and informed me that DES is going to be doing a water quality monitoring um, project on the Merrimack River and part of the area is going to be in the town of Litchfield and she thought it was really uh, I called her and talked to her and she thought it was a really good idea for the town 
to request to be part of this process. Um, so there's no cost involved for the town. The data that we're able to collect um, could actually help the town possibly remove um, some of the impaired water listings that, that are in our town. If the test results coming back, um, that you know what they believe is contaminants in the water and it's not showing certain levels, it's possible you could get these waterways removed from the list, um, which could you know save the town of uh, Litchfield uh, some money in the annual stormwater management program. So um, anyhow, I'm just asking for the board's permission to um, begin conversations with the state and, and commit the town of Litchfield to participating in this program. Questions, gentlemen? Do we really need a motion? I mean, you are our, our agent uh, for the storm. Yeah, program. I just I want to I wanted to make sure you know I don't I don't it's new territory and if it I don't if it ends up in the newspapers or whatever and um, I don't know where it's going. I uh, just wanted to make sure the board. We'll give him a motion. Yeah, I just sure. Ask him. I should I do it? Sure. All right. I authorize the town administrator to participate in the NHDES 2018 River Monitoring Program as part of the town's stormwater management program ms4 permit moved by mr schaefer is there a second second seconded by mr brunel discussion all in favor say aye. aye aye all opposed abstain motion carries five zero zero okay next item mr brown electricity aggregation i think this is a, another one of those items <coughs> that i'm not sure if it requires the vote of the board but this town has been participating uh, with other towns and schools, all coordinated through the National Regional Planning Commission, uh, where we bid out our um, electric consumption. And our contract this year expires in November 2018. Uh, all those uh, that are willing to participate again, we need to have a signed MOU in by May 1st. I'm assuming the town, it's, we've had good luck. Um, I think they've, we've, We've saved forty-seven thousand dollars in electrical costs uh, since the inception of this program. Gentlemen, so. entertain a motion. I recommend that uh, I recommend the town of Litchfield continue the particip participation in the National Regional Electrical Supply Irrigation Program and authorize the town administrator to execute the memo of understanding prior to May first, two thousand eighteen. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. Discussion or questions? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5-0-0. Zero, zero. This made sense because it has the MOU in it. But right. Mm. Hazard yeah, mitigation, Troy. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> um, this no action required here. I just wanted to remind the board. Uh, I did talk to the board uh, last summer or maybe September that National Regional Planning Commission, they receive funding through, federal, through uh, FEMA uh, to update the town's hazard mitigation plan. And the purpose of this plan is um, it's a requirement for the town to have an up-to-date current plan. Otherwise, you're not eligible to receive reimbursement for natural disasters. Um, and if, <coughs> if we were able to identify a hazard in our community, uh, probably a good example would be that we have a failing culvert that's causing flooding and, you know, uh, property damage. <clears throat> that with having an, uh, a current plan in place, it makes, Sir, the town, your jacket? Oh. It makes the town yeah. eligible for federal funding um, to help mitigate these, these problems. Okay. So we just had our first meeting. We thought this plan was going to be over with, uh, but as soon as it was awarded to NRPC, I don't know what happened, the federal government froze the budget or something, and so everything stopped. We just held our first meeting a couple weeks ago, and we'll be you know, meeting now for about four months. The step that you'll be involved in is that when the plan is in final draft form, it will be brought back to this board, presented to you. I believe we have a public hearing on it, and then eventually adopted. Questions? Comments? Okay, hearing none, we will move on. Uh, reports on other business. Mr. Brown, do you have a report? 
asking, I just wanted to make the board aware that um, <clears throat> I'll be attending, along with Karen and Heather, uh, a Department of Labor workshop tomorrow in Wyndham. They have a series of workshops going on around the state. We chose to sign up for this one. And, um, you know, they have workshops about once every other year to just make sure employers uh, are aware of the uh, various laws that we're required to follow. So that's from 9 to noon tomorrow. Okay. Selectman reports. Mr. Burnell. Uh, nothing to report. The next budget committee meeting is on April 12th. That's when I'll have something to report. Okay. I'm good. Quiet. Okay. Mr. Weber, do you have anything? Nothing at this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you never know. He, yeah. might, he might be new. Right. I want to give him an opportunity. <coughs> uh, Mr. Schaefer. Uh, our next rec commission meeting is tomorrow night, so uh, okay. next week I'll have something. Mr. Bork? I got nothing. Okay. I uh, just want to take a second to um, express our sincere appreciation to all the townspeople who went out to vote on that miserable day. Uh, we had a, a tremendous turnout, and I would also like to thank the townspeople for the confidence that they gave us by voting um, our items that were recommended. Um, and I, I think it, uh, the vote of confidence is good for everyone uh, because it, I think it illustrates that at least we're on the right path. We're doing the people's business in a way that they're happy with and I, that's a good thing. And um, I'm, I'm thrilled at the amount of voters that came out. And I especially want to thank the Board of Selectmen for the hours that they put in um, in designing the budget and working overtime on re um, designing the fire station project and I also want to thank the members of the budget committee and the town administrator and the fire department who participated in that project because I think it truly um, showed that that you know when you're committed to something you're transparent and you present the facts the way um, that we that we did that the people will react to that and react positively and uh, Gentlemen, I want to thank you very much for everything that you did. And um, a shout out to Carrie Douglas also um, for the work that she put in. And, um, and everyone out, the town employees, because uh, the, the effort uh, was fruitful. And, and I'm, I'm very pleased. So. And it was a huge team effort. Yes. Overall. Yep. Yep. OK, there are no items removed for consent. Um, other business to come before the board, the body? Uh, next meeting of the board is Monday, April 9th at 6 p.m. And the only other business we have to do tonight is to go into a non-public session um, under RSA 91A, colon 3, 2A, compensation, and RSA 91A, colon 3, 2D, real estate. So I will entertain a motion to go into non-public to handle both of those items. So moved. Moved by Mr. Brunel. Second. Seconded by Mr. Schaefer. And we will take a roll call vote. Mr. Brunel? Yes. Mr. Weber? Yes. I vote yes. Mr. Yes. Bork? And Mr. Schaefer? Yes. We are now in non-public session. We will only come out to adjourn. So I will thank everyone for watching tonight. And um, we will see you at the next meeting.